My dear people of God, in our first reading done by Mary, we see all the flags of joy, of hope, and of optimism. Now that seems strange because this was a time of persecution. Stephen had just been stoned to death under the eyes of Paul, who has now become the main person who is persecuting the Christians. They were not called Christians at that moment. They were just called followers of the way. And so they left Israel and they went out into what is called the diaspora. You can actually see it, the spreading of the Jews outside Israel. And they went to the countries which are present-day Muslim countries, Syria and Turkey. Of course, the prophet Muhammad would come six centuries later. But here they decide they're going to stay not with anybody but back with their fellow Jews. And then cautiously they decide to leave their fellow Jews and go out and preach the good news to the people who spoke Greek or they were called Hellenists. They were for most part Gentiles, though there were a few Jews among them as well. And they received them with joy and hope and optimism. And this is what the joy comes from. This is where the hope comes from. They looked at the apostles, not the apostles only, but the fellow Christians who had come to bring the news, good news. And they saw, first of all, that this was a gift from God. Secondly, they saw the hand of God was with them. And the third thing they realized that there were leaders here, leaders like Barnabas. And what are the qualities that Barnabas had, the qualities that we need in our good shepherds today? A man of integrity, a man of faith, a man on whom the Holy Spirit was going to work. We need these in our good shepherd. And we've been hearing this theme for the last two days. First of all, on Sunday, we heard Jesus speak about the good shepherd, a shepherd, and he describes himself as one who takes care, nourishes, and is concerned about the sheep. In our gospel today, the first 10 uh, verses which were read yesterday, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the sheep gate. And therefore, Jesus identifies himself with the sheep that he is going to care for, which he is going to nourish. And he requires this from those who will be <coughs> entrusted to take care of his sheep. We have heard a lot about shepherds, good and bad shepherds, and press especially in our church circles and the media today. But Jesus here was referring to the bad shepherds, the scribes and the Pharisees with whom he was clashing again and again, not because they were bad men, but because they were leading people astray. They were misunderstood and they, were, they misunderstood their, their, their role. They thought they had to control people and they failed in that respect. Here he is now in the portico of Solomon. We will hear about the portico of Solomon again in Acts chapter 3, when Peter and John will heal the lame man. At this time, it is winter, and you can, you can imagine it being very cold. It was a celebration of the dedication of the temple, the Hanukkah. It had taken place 164 BC, when during the time of the Maccabees, the temple which had been desecrated was rededicated to the Lord. If you want to read a little more about it, you can read it in the first book of Maccabees, chapter 4. It's magnificent. You have goosebumps when you read how they cared for the place in which they worked and in which they worshipped the Lord, their sacred space. And you can imagine the thoughts that were going around in Jesus' head when he thought about the sheep that he had to take care of. And he was going to entrust them to men and women like you and to me. But first he had to clash, it seems, with the scribes and the Pharisees. John's gospel begins with the cleansing of the temple where Jesus throws down the gauntlet and saying, there is a new way of looking at the kingdom of God. And the Pharisees and the scribes did not like it. And then Jesus used words that identified himself with God. Remember the time when Moses was sent by God to go to Pharaoh and, let, and tell Pharaoh to let my people go? And Moses said to God, who am I to tell them sent me? And God said, tell them, I am 
has sent you. And Jesus will use these same words, I am the good shepherd, I am the sheep gate. And the Pharisees knew very well what Jesus was speaking about. And Jesus would tell them, the sheep that I have, nobody will take away from me. Because the Father is greater than everybody. The Father is more powerful. And it is this hope and optimism that he gives to all of us. He puts you and me in charge of the sheep of today, our fellow Christians, that we care, we nourish, and we foster in faith. Jesus knew that we would be weak, that we would misunderstand very often the gospel, that because of our weakness, we would compromise it. But Jesus still trusted us. The story is told of how Jesus went to heaven soon after the resurrection, and the saints and angels were rejoicing. We are so glad you came back to us. And who is in charge of the kingdom? And he says, well, 12 fishermen. And they asked him, what about your backup plan, just in case it fails? And Jesus says, I have no backup plans. And the angels and saints say, so what would happen if these people fail? The kingdom would be not announced to people. And Jesus says, yeah, that is true. But they won't fail. Because whatever the Father has given me, I will not lose. I won't let anybody snatch it away from me. Whatever the Father has given me, I will hold dear to me. And it is with that faith and with that confidence, with that encouragement, that you and I go out to preach the good news to people. And how do we preach the good news? With three very simple things. First, we heal. Because everything that Jesus did when he preached the good news was connected with healing. Second, with love. What Jesus gave us was, love one another as I have loved you. And he showed us that in Matthew chapter 25. When you feed the hungry, when you visit the sick, when you give drink to the thirsty, when you do it to the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. And the third and final way of preaching the good news and taking care of the sheep is service. Jesus washed the feet of his disciples and he sends us out. I came not to serve, not to be served, but to serve. And our credibility as good shepherds will be in the way we take care and we are at the service of the people that are entrusted to us. All the good words that we do will have very, very little effect when they see us washing the feet of our brothers and sisters, then they will believe. We have to be like Barnabas, men men and women of integrity, men and women of good faith, men and women who realize that the Holy Spirit has come down upon us. And we need to call people, call them by name, and realize that they too have been called to be good shepherds to the people. God bless you all. Join me now as we pray together. We pray for men and women in our midst, men and women who are full of integrity, men and women who are full of faith, men and women who realize the Holy Spirit is upon them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the shepherds in our church as they continue to look after, to nourish, and to care for the sheep entrusted to them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase of vocations to priestly and religious life. We pray for solid marriages. We pray for our teenagers as they grow up in faith. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have asked us to pray for them. We pray for the deceased members of the Revelant family. We pray for those who have asked us to pray for them, who are sick, who are ailing, those suffering from cancer, from Parkinson's, from ALS, and those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord Gracious God, we ask you to keep us in your loving care. You are our good shepherd, and we make this prayer through Christ our Lord.